So we are about to start with Israel. Uh, Startup Nation Central, a unique organization that doesn't resemble any other, both in ter terms of mission and model, where Jamie Kletskinski is the VP business, business Development. We will also listen to Vinova, Swedish Innovation Agency, and Anne-Marie Feynman, who is the head of the Vinova in the office at Tel Aviv. And we also have the Embassy of Sweden in uh, Israel uh, and Ambassador Erik Ullenhag. So I think we are ready to start this session and I will leave the word to Mr. Erik Ullenhag. The stage is yours. Thank you so much, dear leaders of innovation. I would have loved to meet you in real life and also learn from you. But that we can meet this way is also a reminder of what in innovation is doing for our lives. Remember, uh, think about if we had a COVID uh, pandemic 20 years ago, this wasn't have been, wouldn't have been possible. And to be honest and use a little bit big words, the world and actually humanity is in acute need of even more of innovation today. Our big challenges, climate change, will never be solved without more of innovation be it COVID for the moment. I know that life is quite dull for most of us living in curfew more or less or closed down societies, but it's amazing to see what innovation and international cooperation has been able to do when it comes to actually developing a vaccine that it might start to get early spring in next year. Innovation really demands more of international cooperation. The development of the COVID vaccine is one example of it. Uh, and we from Sweden and the Swedish embassy in this case, and also Vinova, the agency for innovation in Sweden, are trying to work more globally. And in this case, proud to be in part of connecting 10 different countries and 10 different ecosystems. Uh, I'm very happy that we now have some, uh, almost half an hour to focus, I won't focus, I will listen and learn, on the Israeli innovation system. It's the Israeli innovation system is one of the best in the world, and it's a true startup nation that I've started to be posted to. That's why Sweden has opened up the Vinova office for innovation in Tel Aviv. It's the second one for us, us in the world. The first one is Silicon Valley. And in any way, the embassy can help in uh, connecting ecosystems in Stockholm to Tel Aviv or Haifa or another part of, of Israel, we are willing to do so. With these words, I would like to hand over to Anne-Marie Fineman, head of the Vinova office here in Tel Aviv, and also to Jeremy Kretschkin uh, from Startup Nation Central. Uh, that will answer this question, I uh, hopefully, around how do you explain that Israel is such a good innovation hub and startup center? And also, what could we do to make an impression uh, be it the Swedish ecosystem or some, uh, some uh, other place in the world to actually make an impression on the startup scene here. I can tell you that the competence and the competition is quite big because a lot of uh, companies and innovators around the world are looking at this trend. So with these words, thank you. And more importantly, thank you for all you're trying to do to actually improve the world and improve for humanity. With these words, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Ambassador, uh, for that introduction. Uh, yes, um, I've been, uh, I opened the office, uh, uh, Vinova's office here in Tel Aviv uh, about two years ago, and I'm fascinated by, by the ecosystem here. Um, Vinova opened an office here for, for, for a very good reason, because it's one of the, Israel is one of the best ecosystems in the world. Um, and with the aim to um, promote and facilitate collaboration between the Swedish and the Israeli ecosystem. Um, so um, I'm really pleased to, to be here together with, um, with, with Jeremy to talk about the, uh, the ecosystem. Uh, but first of all, uh, Jeremy, uh, tell us a little about Startup Nation Central. <laughs> Hello, Anne-Marie. Hello, everyone. Uh, great to be here. So excited. Um, so Startup Nation Central, we are technically an NGO, non-profit organization. And uh, beyond just being non-profit, we're also non-revenue. So we're uh, solely uh, backed by philanthropists, uh, donors, 
Uh, we have 80 people on staff, so we're not that small. And uh, we have a building in Tel Aviv. And, and Marie, you know this building. We've been partnering so much on various events and activities there and delegations. And we have a small office also in, uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, we map the Israeli ecosystem of innovation. We have the database of every single startups and VCs and everyone in Israel. Uh, 6,500 startups in Israel does not include all of the uh, service companies, just the pure technology-driven uh, scalable startups. And we help large multinationals around the world to navigate and engage with Israeli innovation, and we have various other activities. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Yes, and, and we're really pleased to have you as a co-host here and also for all, the, all of the collaborative um, uh, work that we've done so far and that we hope to do uh, going forward as well. Mm -hmm. So um, what about then the Israeli ecosystem? What is it? What, what is it about it? What is it that makes it so special and how is it different from, from all other ecosystems? Well, this is something we hear from many of the guests that we're getting all the, the, during the year. Uh, they, they go to Silicon Valley, to Boston, to Shanghai, to uh, Berlin, and to uh, uh, Stockholm and, and, and Singapore. And then they come to Israel, they say, oh, but there is something different here. The, one, the first difference is that we don't have a local market. No market. And even beyond the borders, we don't have this. We're not just a small country. We don't have a local market. We don't have Europe. We don't have Asia. And so uh, all the companies are thinking global from day one. Every single startup has a business model that is global. Second thing is that uh, we are not really good because of this market as understanding the market. And so what we start with in Israel, we're starting with technology. And the entrepreneurs, once they have the technology, they ask themselves, what should we do with this technology? And then they are very opportunistic that can go to any, uh, any kind of sectors. Everything is relevant if, if there is a business opportunity for them. So what I can say is that uh, the specificity is that we are very, very B2B driven, of course, due to these technology driven startups, and uh, much less B2C, and, and so uh, much less, I would say, um, um, sensitive to uh, regulations or competitions when you have those B2C uh, startups that are globally known. So we have companies that may be more technical, more uh, very stable, and. Uh, and uh, technology driven and um, in many cases maybe unknown because the technology is embedded everywhere. You may not know the brand, but it's, uh, it's the, the specific DNA of Israeli startups in a few words. Mm. And, and yeah, and, and why do you think this happened? What, what um, is there anything particular that, that kind of um, uh, made the, the startup scene so strong, uh, as strong as it is today? Is there any particular, cultural thing, do you think, or, or what makes it so special? Yes, definitely the cultural element is key in Israel. Uh, in Israel, there is a test for risk. The perception of failure in Israel is very different from uh, the European culture or Asian culture even more. Uh, people are supposed to fail if they want to succeed one day, and it's embedded in the, in the culture of the country, not only for entrepreneurs and startups and even early stage investors, but everywhere in the society. Um, at school and large companies uh, and in everything, uh, everything is, is designed around uh, where you're expected to fail if you want to learn. And that's something that is easy to understand in, with the words. But once you get to know Israel better, then you see that it's something that is really, really deep into the Israeli culture for sure. Of course, there are many other criteria. Uh, when you don't see the box, it's easier to think outside of the box. <laughs> um, that's what I said earlier when there's no local market. Uh, there. Uh, also, a lot of different uh, bridges that were developed between the world and Israel that put Israel in a, solution, in, a, in a situation to solve global problems. And of course, Israel facing its own problems and uh, solving its own problems with water, with, of course, cybersecurity and security and the army and everything. All the problems Israel has managed to solve using technology that now can be applied in the civil world and uh, for other issues. Hmm. Yeah, that's, it's really interesting. And uh, obviously, you are known as the, the startup nation, but the ecosystem um, has other components to it as well, um, especially uh, a lot of international co collaboration with international presence here. So could you uh, tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, of course, there are different pillars. Every country, they have these three pillars to start with the government, uh, organizations like you supporting, and you have the academic world, and you have, of course, uh, the local corporates. Uh, in Israel, I think what we managed to do successfully is to build those other pillars. Uh, access to funding with over 220 VCs in Israel. 
we actually, during COVID in September, broke the record, more than $1 billion invested uh, in the local startups in Israel uh, for a country of 9 million people uh, this September, just last month. So we're talking about a very uh, healthy access to funding environment in Israel, although COVID, of course, affects it in a bad way. Uh, we have, of course, the government that is helping in many ways. Uh, it's more tactical uh, because uh, in Israel, it's only 15% of the R&D money uh, is actually public money, uh, which is much less than the OECD average, which is over 50%. And, uh, and the different uh, different uh, players, like universities indeed, but uh, with very strong uh, Council of Technology offices, uh, all the uh, uh, hundreds of accelerators in Israel, many, many programs, uh, many, 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 I would say, hubs and communities that were developed and are constituting this virtuous cycle that helps innovations to uh, reach the, 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 the industry. Excellent. And and you mentioned um, that uh, technology-wise, uh, a lot of the technologies have been developed because of, of uh, local needs, as it were, on local problems locally that you needed to, to resolve. So, but what would you say the most, um, uh, the strongest areas for Israel uh, Israel's ecosystem uh, at the moment, would you say? Yeah, of course. Cybersecurity Israel is known as being a powerhouse for cybersecurity due to uh, the challenges the country is facing. Uh, but actually, not very little amount of people will know that there are more startups doing digital health than cyber in Israel. It's very well developed as well, earlier stage companies, but extremely innovative and very, very interesting for anyone interested in healthcare. <laughs> Check Israel. Uh, of course, sectors that are fastest growing sectors in Israel like food tech. Food tech is insane in, currently in Israel, amazing innovations and agriculture, of course, as well, is uh, extremely developed uh, and very healthy in Israel. Uh, I would add also uh, fintech and maybe um, uh, industrial application, industrial IoT, industry 4.0, which is today probably one of the uh, most promising sectors in the in the high tech industry in Israel. A third of global investments today are made in Israel in that sector, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Israel is third place after China and US uh, in industrial IoT uh, startups uh, in terms of investment. So we're talking about different sectors that you're right. Not a lot of people may know Israel is also knowledgeable in those sectors. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I find it fascinating that you're very strong in the uh, automotive sector as well. While you don't have um, uh, automotive uh, production at all, you don't make cars, but, but still, around the future mobility and autonomous vehicles, you're also very, very strong. And I find that quite fascinating. With Mobileye, yeah. the Israeli startup that was sold for $15 billion. And you're right, because of both automotive and industry for, and the industrial applications, and, uh, and manufacturing, et cetera, uh, Sweden is a, is a global leader. And then that those are definitely the sectors where there's a lot to do together uh, between Israel and, uh, and Sweden. Yeah. And um, um, if you'd like to say a little bit more about what's, what's Startup Nation Central's role very complex uh, uh, in this very complex innovation system? Well, we believe it's important to start with knowledge. Know yourself. It's almost philosophy, right? Uh, uh, so what we do is that we're mapping the Israeli ecosystem. As I said, we have this database called the Startup Nation Finder. And you can, anyone, all of the audience now, you can go to the Startup Nation Finder website and both the, all the startups in Israel, all of the players. Uh, this is something that uh, is very important for us to understand what every single player can do. Uh, we have a team of 15 analysts full time just on doing that. Um, what we do as well is that we are uh, connecting the dots between uh, large companies. Uh, we, if you have a B2B tech environment in Israel, of course, everybody wants to see large corporates uh, just because it's the, the partners, the access to market, the funding, everything is coming from those natural partners. So we focus uh, definitely on those players and we help them to navigate and to find the partners to uh, understand the right model because Israel being different, you cannot apply the same uh, you know, uh, the, the, the same tools that you have in different areas around the world and do the same in Israel. Um, and so we are helping them to bridge that. Um, and we help them, of course, to find technologies and people and, and everything needed uh, with the objective always to hear from them that they don't need us anymore. Not only we're free of charge yeah. at Startup Nation Central, but we're not like, a, unlike any consulting company, what we want to do is to move to the next partner 
and make sure everybody's smart enough not to need us anymore. Like it's like ed education in school, you know, you want people to graduate and fly by them home by their own. Yeah, excellent. Yes, and um, so when you in your work, what what do you what do you look for, or rather, what are the um, uh, what are the Israeli organisations, the startups, and others looking for when they want to collaborate internationally? Well, I would say I would say it's very important to understand the fact that we don't have a local market in Israel. Startups are the first step. It's the most important step in the life of an Israeli startup is going global. And so access to funding, we spoke about it, uh, acceleration programs and, and governments and everything is there in Israel. But going global and having their first customers abroad, abroad is definitely the most important uh, milestone in the life on the, of an Israeli startup. And so definitely the, uh, 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 the players playing uh, a role in that step to really bridge the real commercial opportunities to have a POC overseas, to understand, to have the product that fits the, the needs. And all of the uh, players uh, playing in that, at that stage of the startups are the most critical. And that's definitely what we're focusing on as well. We're, what we're focusing on mm. as well, yes. And um, if you're a, 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 a multinational corporation or uh, some other organization looking to collaborate with, with Israel, um, what's in it for you? What, what does, um, obviously we've talked about the system, but, but still, what are the opportunities for multinationals uh, in, in Israel and, and what can they benefit uh, from apart from um, just finding technology? Although the just is, you know, that obviously is very important. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's definitely beyond finding technologies. As we said, the, the consequence, the fact that we are, have a technology-driven environment, most companies being B2B, uh, what multinationals are find in Israel are actually partners that touch their core offering. Uh, typical startups in the Silicon Valley, you know, are more like, well, companies you can support with marketing. And uh, in Israel, you can't support them with marketing. You give them... You need to give them your data, your engineers. It's open out surgery to work with an Israeli startups. It's not easy, but it can actually affect your core company. Uh, companies like uh, Dell or Merck, KGGA, the, the, uh, the German Merck, or uh, Intel are companies that publish the fact that Israel generates, I mean, IPs from Israel or their teams in Israel uh, are generating over 10% of their global revenues of the company. So we're talking about companies that manage to leverage it. And to finish with that point, uh, it's definitely not uh, about opening R&D center in Israel because many companies did that and we see less and less now because what we see the effect is that a lot of competition for engineering and uh, companies that do come and saying, I'm gonna open R&D and I'm gonna develop something there, uh, they actually compete against the ecosystem. And the best and most scalable and most successful model we see are actually open innovation maybe small presence or partnerships with local players, and then you work with many startups, and then you can do a lot of different things, partnering, uh, sharing your challenges, sharing your needs, your knowledge, so Israelis can actually tackle them. And if the Silicon Valley is that present in Israel, it's not because they don't have innovation there, <laughs> definitely not. It's because Israel is different. It's very complementary. It's something different. Mm -hmm. And um, um, if I just uh, can add a personal reflection, is uh, I think there's an added value also in a bit, little bit of cultural infusion uh, when you come to Israel. Uh, I think the uh, the pace here, the um, um, the inventiveness, uh, the attitude towards innovation, and the willingness to take risk is is something that we can can then many of uh, many of us can can learn from as well. So I think that's. Um, uh, definitely some, something very beneficial. And um, uh, could you describe uh, um, a successful collaboration between uh, um, a multinational and, um, and a startup that, that, you, that you know of uh, here? I know there must be very, very many, but... Um, uh, you know, know, of course, uh, there are many, many different uh, uh, examples from the bigger ones that we mentioned, Mobileye, it's very successful Mobileye because Intel decided to actually reverse everything. Once they acquired Mobileye, they made all the, the global automotive programs uh, managed from Israel by the Mobileye team. They reversed everything. They acquired the company and then they made it like the epicenter of their strategy. Of course, there are many, many different uh, uh, success stories at all levels. I can talk about my own. You know what? 
I was the head of business development in a company called PrimeSense. Another name you would not know if you're not into startups in Israel, but we designed the 3D sensors in the Kinect, if you know the Xbox uh, Kinect, uh, back then, and we were like a revolution for Microsoft. They're one of the flagship products, and we did all of the uh, 3D module, uh, and then we were acquired by Apple. And today, if you have a, an iPhone in your, in your, uh, in your hands, you, the small uh, Face ID and then the LiDAR, are actually technologies that are developed in Israel. Uh, actually, I worked on that while I was working uh, in Apple on, uh, after the acquisition. So we're talking about many, many, many different success stories. Sometimes they're visible, sometimes they're invisible and in your pocket, like the discount key or dripping irrigation or the uh, pill cam that you swallow or the many, many different. Uh, uh, and the digital printing was also uh, born in Israel. Many others, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, there certainly are, are a lot of examples. And um, seeing as um, Israel has uh, more than 350 multinational corporates who actually have either an innovation or an R&D center here, um, if you want to come to Israel to, to do innovation collaboration, um, what would you recommend? What's your advice? How, what, what do you have to do to, in order to stand out? You know, how... Um, as an international, multinational coming to Israel, um, or as a startup for that matter, how do you stand up and just make sure that you, you get heard above the noise? That's a very important question. You know, many multinationals first, they think they're very important and they are, and when they are used in their own uh, ecosystem to be the stars, and then they come to Israel and they see that everyone is already here. And then they have to be proactive and brand themselves if they want to actually leverage Israel innovation. So the first thing is don't think that money is the most needed here. Knowledge is most needed here. So in many cases, you don't need a lot of money, but you need to be proactively expressing your needs. If you come with a shopping cart and saying, I'm looking for these technologies, you may find technologies, but it's not the most efficient way. My, my uh, advice would be to actually understand that Israelis are eager to pivot, to steer their strategy according to your specific uh, challenges. So come to Israel, find platforms like Startup Nation Central that can help you uh, for free as well uh, to uh, convey your message, to uh, express your needs, to, to tell the Israelis what is happening on the market. And, and after a few months, uh, maybe a year, uh, you will for sure find innovations and partners that will develop solutions for what you're looking for. And that's uh, definitely a specificity in Israel. Don't, they have assumptions of what you need. They have no idea. Don't look exactly for you the solution, but expect them to, to be very, very active to adapt once you engage with them. Mm. Mm. That's, uh, that's, that's very good advice, I think. Uh, and um, uh, we talked earlier about the, the, the strongest areas um, in the Israeli um, uh, ecosystem, and you mentioned food tech also as an up and coming area. Uh, are there other areas, either technology areas or industries where you see um, if you kind of look, uh, try to look a little bit more towards uh, towards the future. Yes, you know, and Israel is again is adapting the the, the opportunities uh, in the market. So sectors that are very very regulated or very low budget or or very long cycles, Israelis are usually less uh, keen to go there, and they prefer to apply technology, which is usually when you start with technology, you start with the horizontal block. You know, so it could be AI, uh, very strongly developed in Israel. Uh, so uh, I would say AI is a very good example and a good answer to your question because uh, a lot of companies around the world, they do AI, a lot of ecosystems very strong in AI. In Europe, you have a lot of hubs doing strong AI. But uh, from my experience, uh, the Israeli AI is different. Uh, if you see the big powerhouses in the US, in Canada, or in the Asia that are really, really strong in AI, they do very long term. They are they, they 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 design the next generations of AI. In Israel, we do the next day AI. <laughs> We're into tangible applications, business applications, and how to leverage AI in your industry the next day. So you don't find the same AI. So don't. So I would say it's not really a sector. It's a bit cheating to, uh, to answering AI. It's horizontal. Everybody needs AI. But uh, you may be surprised by how Israel tackled those challenges of AI. And it's less being visionary. Uh, and more being very practical, down to earth. Next day, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. And and how, considering that um, uh, 
how do you see how do you think the the ecosystem in Israel will actually develop going going forward? Do you think it'll continue to be the the startup nation or or do you have um, other ambitions in addition to that? You know, first of all, staying the startup nation is important. Uh, it's it's always an everyday effort. Uh, every country is now some some startup nation at their own and the, and, and the entire world is the, does innovation. The, 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 the specificity of Israel is not being innovative. The entire world is innovative and many different scale. It's more, mostly here the, uh, the combination between entrepreneurship, innovation and the culture that makes us the startup nation. I think, uh, I think our evolution at the next stage is to uh, make sure uh, to optimize and, uh, the access uh, to, to, to the high tech, uh, uh, I would say uh, revenues and the ad tech assets to the peripheric uh, populations in Israel. Uh, you know, more uh, Israeli Arabs, more uh, women, uh, more Orthodox Jews, uh, more different, you know, uh, the, the, the cities all around Israel uh, that were actually mentioned uh, earlier by uh, Eric, all of those cities, this is very important, I think, um, uh, for us uh, to, uh, to, uh, to make sure the entire society in Israel is connected to, uh, the, to the high tech. It's, it's a 50% of the industrial exports but it's only 10% of the employees. So that's why I think this is the huge next step to keep on scaling. You're li you have limited uh, workforce. Um, and of course that goes with uh, as being, I mean, it, we need to become leaders in uh, diversity, uh, uh, in tech and uh, in strategy to, uh, to work with everyone. I think that's the most important next step for Israel today. Yeah. Excellent. And um, I think we're, we're kind of nearing the, the end of our discovery journey in Israel. So I'd just like to ask uh, whether there are any questions from the audience. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, we have some questions, actually. Thank you for an excellent uh, talk. So. Uh, what entrepreneurial mindset culture, which is typical in Israel, could be relevant elsewhere? You know, that's a very good question. And we see a lot of people coming to Israel with their notebook and saying, OK, let's uh, write down. But I will spoil you something that internet, on the internet, you find all the recipes, look, not only for to cook, but also to do innovation. And the most important thing is not about the recipe, it's about the ingredients. And we, each of our ecosystems they have different ingredients. So the first thing is to, as I started with that, to know yourself, know the cards you have in your hands. Israel is successful by bringing actually value to other ecosystems, not by competing against the other ecosystems. So what you learn from Israel is be global, uh, be partner with others. And by working with Israel, you'll be able to learn Israeli culture. And Israelis, by working with Sweden, they learn Israeli Sweden, uh, Israeli culture. Uh, they will learn about Swedish culture, sorry. So my in one line answer would be uh, the answer, there is not much to learn. You need to go through the whole education of the Israelis, but what we can do is to be more uh, collaborative and that's how things are actually happening today. Thank you. Uh, and I think that was uh, the question that came up from the chat room, but uh, I think it's a really interesting uh, presentation and uh, I'm looking forward how the ecosystems can work together. Uh, I. My summary is no lo local market, business to business driven, culture infusion, the taking the risk. Anne-Marie, from the Swedes and Israel, can you go a little bit deeper into that one? That Israelis are more open to risk taking than the Swedes are. Can we learn from that from each other? Um, yes, well, thank you. I think that's a very good uh, question. And cultural infusion is, is a, a term I picked up from one of the venture capitalists uh, here, actually, who is interested in investing in, in Swedish startups. Um, and I think that um, uh, our cultures, are, uh, I would say that our, the Swedish and the Israeli culture are, are co uh, complementary in a way, whereas we're very consensus focused in Sweden. Um, and uh, in Israel, you, you, you know, you probably you know this better, Jeremy, but I'll, I'll give my, uh, my personal perspective. Um, uh, in Israel, it's, um, uh, consensus doesn't really matter. Uh, if you think you're right, you will go for it. And um, uh, um, so there's much more of, of uh, there's, a, there's an assertiveness, which is also very different. 
and you're not afraid to speak your mind and you're not afraid to do things if you think they're the right thing to do, regardless of whether everyone else agrees with you or not. And I think that that combination is actually quite interesting, sometimes um, not so easy, but I think we have we can actually learn quite a lot from each other. So uh, uh, and my personal perspective and my, my experience so far is that um, uh, the people um, I meet here in Israel, they are very, very open to collaboration. They may not always agree with you and they will tell you so, but I find that quite refreshing. And, um, uh, and they are very open to discussions and for uh, open to collaborate and also very friendly. So uh, uh, I think it's a, this is a, a great, for many reasons, uh, a fantastic ecosystem to collaborate with. Sounds amazing. Do you want to add anything to that, Jeremy? Well, I, I must agree. You know, it's it's everything. You know, once you don't have uh, the same perception of risk, of course, you take more risk as an employee. And uh, you know, the, the 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 idea of of responsibility between within an organization. When will you make a choice as an executive in an organization? When you are, uh, I mean, the, the the chain of reactions of taking risk is something that needs to be taken care of the the, the whole way. You cannot say just ask for someone to take more risk if you don't empower that person to take more risk. If the management, senior management of the organization doesn't judge the package of projects and not the projects individually, uh, like it's mostly done in Sweden. You, you know, there's one project and then we judge the project whether it, no, you need to like the portfolio of a VC. You cannot judge the VC just by picking one company or even the LinkedIn career uh, by just picking one line. You cannot judge a person. And I think that's the Israeli spirit. Do what you have to do, and we're gonna we're gonna judge you once you're done with your life, <laughs> not at the beginning of the first experience. Thank you so much, and thank you for that excellent presentation. And I'm so looking forward for more collaborations in the future. Uh, wish you the best day, uh, Jeremy and Marie and Eric. Thank you so much for this session. Nice to meet you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone.